Good day, dear friends, and welcome to another session of Intercede Weekly. This is our Friday noontime gathering to pray and fast together as one church, as one spiritual family. We encourage you, invite your family, your friends, your office mates, and together, let's seek the Lord. Now, we've been going through an exciting series called Motivate, and today I want to discuss with you Modeling. The title for our devotion for today is Modeling a Lifestyle of Prayer. Now, when we think about the word lifestyle, what comes to mind? For me, it is this phrase, the lifestyles of the rich and famous. You see, in our social media world today, people can convey or model their lives in a certain filtered, curated, and edited way on their Facebook on their Instagram or whatever platform there is. And so I see two ways to live life. One is living life from the outside in, and two, living life from the inside out. Now, what's the difference? Living life from the outside in focuses more on what people think of us. We want to please people. We want to get attention. We want to get likes. And even if that's really not who we are at the core, sometimes it's contrived, hypocritical, and sometimes we fall into this. But that is what we are used to nowadays. However, the opposite is also more valuable. The second way of life is living life from the inside out. What does that mean? Life as an overflow of what's already inside, what's in the heart. And this is what we will be talking about today. Our whole discussion will center upon the heart that is willing to pray and model a lifestyle of prayer. You see, modeling is, after all, our genuine way of living life pleasing to the Lord. So, we need to start with the heart. As we go through Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 6, this is essentially what God is calling upon His people to do before they enter into the promised land, to check their hearts. And He says in verse 4 onwards, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. This is how the Lord is instructing His people with the heart. This prayer which we just read was commonly known as the Shema. This would be the prayer that families would actually pray together every day. And so we see that modeling a lifestyle of prayer begins with the heart. So let me ask you this question. How is your heart today? Are you loving God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength? You see, the answer to how your heart is will ultimately reflect upon our prayer life. A heart that is joyful, filled with faith, a soul that is peaceful, lives that are satisfied, contented, and rested. These will reflect a vibrant, dynamic prayer life. Whereas a heart that is distraught, restless, or maybe a soul that is worried, sad, or anxious, and a body that is wearied and heavy laden, that will reflect a lethargic or maybe a passive prayer life. So right now, as we begin our time, let's start with the heart. Take time to bear your heart and soul unto the Lord. Whatever you're going through right now, cast your anxieties upon Him because He cares for you. And after you cast those burdens onto Him, worship Him as the Lord of your life. Worship Him that He is the only Lord of your life and that your love for Him really overflows in your heart, soul, and strength. Take these next few moments, whether in silence, just to bear your heart to Him and worship and praise Him and even proclaim His character and attributes.
Now, isn't that wonderful to bear our heart to the Lord and worship Him? The second thing that I want to remind us all is that when we model a lifestyle of prayer, we are ultimately influencing other people. We are motivating them. And how do we do that? We do so by influencing their hearts. We start with our lifestyle and we inevitably impact theirs. And so Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 goes this way, You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. In other words, God is telling them this lifestyle, this way of life, you shall show and exhibit towards your loved ones. You see, the most effective way of modeling is influencing the heart of people. So let me ask you this. Do you know how the hearts of people are all around you? Have you taken the time to ask them how they are? Have you taken the time to ask your family member, your friend, your office mate, and even people in your discipleship group? For some families or even some companies, they have the time weekly to have a prayer, to have a mini Bible study. And I know of some people who actually continually converse about their day-to-day things regarding their faith. Whichever works for you, whether it's a weekly set time or an ongoing conversational thing, the point is people won't care about what you share until you share that you care. So in other words, when was the last time that you intentionally asked someone, Hey, how are you doing? You see, sometimes we get so busy and caught up in our own lives that we forget about the people all around us. And so right now, for the next few moments, I want to encourage you. Ask God to bring to your mind people in your family, among your friends, and even colleagues from your workplace whom you can actually pray for. Write their names down on your journal or in your notes and commit to pray for them each and every day. I really encourage you because the way to influence them, the way to motivate them is first and foremost by praying for them. Now, isn't it wonderful to just be expectant of who God will bring to our mind? Maybe it's someone we haven't talked to yet or maybe someone whom we've forgotten to ask. But regardless, God has brought you some people in your mind that you can actually pray for. Now, I want to show you that modeling also focuses on values. Modeling, like we heard last Sunday, is not about perfection but authenticity and so right now as we think about modeling a lifestyle of prayer what certain values or even virtues do we want to see displayed in our lives what certain values do we want to see in our family or even in our places of work you can actually think about it and you can type it down in the comments section by typing something like this I want to see blank in my life or I want to see blank in my family or in my workplace. That could be something like, I want to see more patience or more honesty, more forgiveness or trust or love. I want to see more service or sacrifice. And then as you're typing that, I want you to realize that the way that you can see these things happen in your life, in the lives of people around you, 
is by first actually modeling and practicing that yourself. It is a very simple exercise, but a truly powerful one that can change your spiritual climate, your spiritual environment all around you in your homes, among your relationships, and even in your workplace. You translate, I want to see blank in my life with I will model blank in my life. You see, for me and my wife, one of our values that we want to emphasize is health. Not only physical, but also spiritual. So the way that we do this is, in terms of our physical health, we model it by actually trying to work out as much as we can to take care of ourselves. But also with our spiritual health, we set designated times of prayer each and every day. Whether that's at noontime or at night, before we sleep, or whether it's our weekly mini Bible study and prayer time with our family, or whether it's us just as a married couple studying the Word of God together, this is how we live out that value, and this is what we model towards our family and our loved ones. So now, take the next few moments to just ask the Lord, what values would He like to see lived out in your family? What are those? What does He want to see in your life and in your family's life? And after that, ask the Lord how you are personally practicing or modeling in each of these values. Whether it's something that you need to stop, maybe something that you need to start doing, or maybe it's something that you can improve or modify or change. Whatever it is, ask the Lord to be able to do that. Because the way that we model a lifestyle of prayer is by focusing on these values. As we prayed for those values to be practiced in our own lives and in the lives of our family, I want to close with this, that modeling a lifestyle of prayer is about being intentional. How do we do this? Well, one key thing is to set a time and a place to be able to pray and engage. You can set this time and place to talk about your personal life, to actually discuss challenges or victories that you're having, even spiritual matters, or simply ask your loved ones, how can I pray for you? That is really an example of being intentional. You remember the people that you prayed for a while ago? Ask the Lord for an opportunity, a divine appointment to engage with them for the next few days or in the next coming week. And I guarantee you that after this session, God will grant you an opportunity to get in touch with them. So after this session, I challenge you, give them a text, give them a call, or set up a virtual catch-up and meet with them in the next few days and just be intentional in asking them, hey, how are you? How can I pray for you? I tell you that when we practice a lifestyle of prayer, people will supernaturally gravitate towards us. God will just bring people in our lives whom we can pray for, whom we can love and serve, including relatives in our family, loved ones, friends, and even people that we work with. You will be the first one they approach when they need prayer or where they're in a challenging situation or they're facing an issue. And I tell you, Jesus modeled a lifestyle of prayer. That is why his disciples asked him one thing that he could teach them. It is how to pray. 
Jesus lived that out each and every day. He set aside time to pray, to be with his Father, and he set time to minister to people. People would come from all over to approach him, and he would show and model his love, his concern, his compassion to them by serving them and by praying for them. So, my dear friends, in the next few days, be expectant. And take those divine moments as a cue from God to motivate and influence people in your life, first and foremost, through a lifestyle of prayer. So right now, why don't we just pray for this, that this will indeed translate to action in our very own lives. Father God, we just pray that we will be able to cultivate and model a lifestyle of prayer and it first starts with us with our hearts we pray O lord that in our very own hearts you would be the lord of all that we would love you with all of our heart soul mind and strength and that this kind of lifestyle will permeate every aspect of our lives and even in the lives of our family among our friends and in our places of work We pray that we will be able to motivate and influence others by showing our care and compassion to them, by praying for them intentionally, and by setting a time and place wherein we can pray together, wherein we can be intentional and dedicate our time to serve and love people all around us, especially in the family. So thank you, Lord, for this time. Again, we pray that we would truly live out this life from the inside out. And it is through the Holy Spirit's work to empower us, to enable us to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. So help us, God. And we pray now for these people in our lives that we will be able to serve them and most of all, to pray for them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.